Hi everyone. I'm in the middle, or rather to the edge, of a very leafy area up in North London in the Enfield direction at Cat Hill. A housing development is just over here, an existing one that's been here a long, long while. I won't put anyone's houses on camera. It's their privacy and private areas and not interested in that. I'm interested in securing that. This area here in front of me is being used at the moment as a nature reserve come ponded area for wildlife and the noise in the background is from diggers that are digging up the area to bring more housing. Uh, the residents in the area have complained long enough and hard enough about it. The environmental groups have complained about it and the uh, conservation groups because of the great crested newts, because of the pipistrelle bats, because of the tortoise and turtle type things in the uh, lakes and ponds within this area uh, to preserve these little beasties. The builders have put up this impenetrable barricade to stop any getting in. The lake is that side. How do they get out is the more important question. Dotted around at some points on the builder's side of the fence are buckets like this. These buckets are put in place to capture live animals and every 12 hours the workers are supposed to come across and find the live animals and take them out. The workers don't do this test or if they do at least it's not every 12 hours and we're a little disappointed at that. In a couple of seconds I'll cross over this barrier so you can have a look at what you can see. But I'm not going to go through any fences or whatnot. And since I'm not some kind of a newt, then since this barrier is for newts, it doesn't make any difference to me. But up here you'll see a great big clearing. Some of the trees in this area here are many hundreds of years old. I'll take you up to one just now that is 400 years old. It has a tree protection order on it, a TPO. There's that magnificent specimen here. It's a glorious old tree that is one of the only ones of its kind in this area. I can't remember the exact strain that it is, but it shouldn't be here. It's not unusual for trees in this area that are very important trees to England to have a tree preser preservation order on it, and most building developers respect these. However, <laughs> there were many other trees, older and bigger and more important than this, on that site already, and the building developers have cut them down. Uh, cutting down a tree will end up having them dragged before the courts, etc. But the fine is only about like a grand or a grand and a half. When you're building houses on a massive size development that this is going to be, you could count down hundreds of trees in that case and still not touch a penny of your profits pretty much. Each tree that's removed gains more value for the company. A thousand or a thousand five hundred pound fine. What does that do to preserve nature in this case? You can see that this tree is old. It's 400 years old. 
branches have come down with the high winds. But if I zoom in, if I can get it to, that is, that is some of the buds on the tree. Um, hang on, let's try and find the correct one. Yeah, that's the limb going to a narrow limb, so you know it's coming from the same tree. You'll see the buds coming out from this limb if I follow the limb back and zoom out because it's now too close in from the exact same tree. It's a living, healthy tree that its way of surviving is to just drop limbs whenever it requires. We expect in the next couple of days that this tree will get toppled and the building developer won't give a hoot about the tree preservation order or the tree protection order, whichever it's called. And because the trees are being felled in a criminal manner, breaking the law, breaking orders of protection on the trees, many people previously from the Occupy campaigns, particularly Occupy campaigns from the north of London, are now in the area and a protection camp has been set up. I'm not going to identify any of the people just because the police have started getting involved now to the extent that there's now a wall of shame on the front gate to this site which is way up at the other side here. The wall of shame currently has the uh, uh, numbers of two police officers and I'll do interviews on people later on to try and get some more details about what exactly has caused them to be mentioned on the wall of shame. But the building development in here is going to be really decently bloody sized. It's going to be huge. The company making it are going to reap huge rewards. A couple of grand per tree. Meh. They'll probably be the same as many other builders and they'll have planning permission to build up to X height and they might go an extra 50 foot or so above that because then, oh sorry about that, yeah we honestly didn't mean to but here's the one grand fine for that as well. Everything when it comes to building development is staged against the local communities. The local communities have very, very little uh, power. They have the power to block things at planning permission, but the companies involved will fight and take everything to European courts, if required, at almost every single turn, because the profits, especially within London, of building property are astronomical. If there is a one-year delay to the building uh, of the properties here, the building developers would actually quite enjoy that because it's an explainable thing to their in investors, but the investors won't mind because currently the property values in London are going up 10% per year. You delay the building of a village and next year when it's eventually built and sold after one year delay you'll make 10% more money. Um, yeah, <laughs> we could do with more people here, especially anybody along the lines of an environmental campaigner, anybody that's a green lawyer, anybody that is willing to take part with direct actions, anybody that's willing to come up with some food for the camp, anyone that's uh, able in the area to come across and be a spokesperson for the area. Several people are here already. We need a lot, 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 lot more people. This is stoppable, or at least the further damage to the environment is preventable. And if we do the cases correctly, with the correct lawyers, we can have proper punishments put onto the building company for ignoring tree preservation orders. 
they had permission to remove some great crested newts and they were told exactly when the great crested newts could be removed two months after the window where you could remove them was closed they started the process of trying to clear the newts during the breeding season we managed to stop all of the development here at that stage uh, for many reasons including that but now I believe that the period where they can clear the newts and when I say clear they're not necessarily looking to save the lives of these newts they're just getting rid of them when we've spoken to the security guards about it they just say now if we find any we're not going to tell you what we do with them If they find any, why don't they tell us what they're doing with them? Telling us that they're not going to tell us what they're doing with them makes it look as if they're ashamed of what they're doing. There's not very much transparency from the building company here. There's not very much encouragement for us to think that they're doing the right thing by nature, by the environment, by the neighbours, by law, by anything. But I'm going to cut this short just now before I start swearing. I'm upset by this. But I'll add on to the tag here. If anybody has any spare pennies or coins or notes or whatever at the moment, it costs coming backwards and forwards from central London to here. It's at zone 5, I think, this area, just south of the M25, pretty much. We desperately need any kinds of donations within the Occupy News Network. Many, many things are happening for us at the moment that are very, very expensive along the lines of the mobile phone bills, obviously, the subscriptions uh, to the networks, the travelling costs, the subsistence when you're in areas, and we have nothing. We're on our arse, literally. We're reorganising the entire campaigns that we do so we can try and see if we can cut any more costs and improve the service at the same time and we think we've got ways forward but there's little point in doing these ways forward if we can't get the mobile phone uh, monthly contracts paid for if anyone knows any places where we can seek donations from please hook us up send an email to this same address or you can send a donation to the email address registered at PayPal which is nemogbr at yahoo.co.uk n-e-m-o-g-b-r at yahoo.co.uk Thank you very, very much. Hopefully I'll see some of you guys around here. I'm going to be around in London until at least Sunday, Monday time. And it would be really, really cool to meet up with some more of you. And thank you very much to the Global News Network for streaming this directly up onto there. And yeah, Carl, certainly we definitely do need some kind of financing for this stage of the revolution. And thank you very much for adding on the address Nemo, N-E-M-O, G-B-R, at Yahoo. .co.uk or if anyone has any ideas on how we can continue things better please hit us up with an email at that address as well and we'll start the dialogue and discussions thank you very very much for watching guys Thank you very much, Carl.